What's happening everybody, this is Spud Too Tight, and I just wanted to give a quick walkthrough on the Akai MPD-218, um, the drum pad mapping. Um, if you're like me, you purchased it, it's a great product man, but when I loaded it up, all of the pads were working except for pad 8 and pad 12. And as you can see, I'm triggering pad 8 right now. Um, so it, it became really frustrating, you know, when you're trying to map everything, everything else works. Um, when I'm hitting them in order but those two pads and um, you know I have a lot of, of drum kits that I create in and I want to be able to trigger these directly in um, the Kai system the software that they have and it was just frustrating but after spending some time I created a preset um, that you can load directly into the MPD 218 um, editor software and then you can send that to the hardware of the MPD 218 and it'll trigger all the pads in order so I'm going to pull up the MPD-218 edit editor software so you can see it and um, kind of follow along the steps. And you can download it in the description. The links will be there. I have also have it for um, Persona Studio One for Impact. Um, so you can load the preset that I created for the Impact and any new kits that you drag into the Impact uh, pads, it will trigger in order when you're hitting them. It'll light up the, the Impact pads and it also triggers from the MPD-218, so it all works together. All right, I have the MPD-218 editor software pulled up, and you definitely have to download this uh, software if you have the MPD-218, um, because this is where you're able to manually map the pad nodes to the software, and you can send that preset to the hardware of the MPD. And looking at it, <coughs> you can see that it has a C2, uh, C sharp 2, and C4. It's kind of all over the place um, from the factory preset that comes in it. You know, when you first receive it, you're supposed to hit program select and hit pad 5, and it doesn't map all correctly. Um, you can see that both notes are set to 44. Um, so I created a, a preset that you can load up, and it loads all of the pads correctly. So when you're hitting the C sharp, uh, two node is going to hit on the bottom left hand corner and all the way across and we'll go back to the Essentials NPC and essentials so you can see them light up at the same time So I go to file Open preset and there it is right there MPD 218. So I select it And once I select it go back to file and I'm going to send the hardware and you're going to change the save current preset hardware as number five and you click send perfect so the preset successfully set to the device I hit OK you can see the change in this in the uh, the pad notes and now it's going to trigger all of the pads correctly um, when we go back to the MPD essentials software and also for studio one impact users I have a walkthrough and also a preset for us as well I'm a studio one guy so um, impact was a big um, uh, component of mine when I'm triggering and creating my own drum kits and I want to be able to trigger everything with this new pad because it's a really great uh, drum controller from Akai and so I have a walkthrough for that as well. Alright I got MP3 Essentials pulled back up now you can see pad 8 and pad 12 are triggering correctly and the rest of the pads are working as well um, everything's perfect it runs smoothly and you know this was a big factor man with these two here so I'm gonna move on to Personas and pull up impact so you can see how I'm mapping those as well. All right, so before we open up Studio One, we want to reopen the MPD 218 editor um, so we can import a new template for Personas' impact um, drum module. And right now it's set to a standalone version of the MPD, what we had prior. Um, so those paths won't trigger correctly if you leave the template installed. Um, when you're opening up Studio One. So we want to go to File, Open Preset, and we're going to input the Impact Preset for MPD-218. This is the one we want to use for Personas Studio One, so we can trigger, uh, trigger the pads correctly for the Impact module. Select it, Open, and we'll go to File again, Send the Hardware, Save Current Preset, as number five so we're going to save the current preset of the hardware as number five so we can send that new data to impact and as you can see if you were looking earlier the numbers are just transposed backwards um, a digit so technically when we first imported it 
it was set to 36 for the note value 37 38 39 so i just had to go one step back a number uh, so 35 36 37 and 38 so when i open up studio one and trigger the pads on impact and this is just a, a blank template so if you're starting fresh this will work for you right off the bat um, as you can see all of the pads are I'm hitting all the pads in order um, going to the left and all the way on top and now everything is in order and this just took a little bit of programming within studio one on impact but I got all of the presets um, lined up accordingly to the pad so if you're hitting the pad the one that's lighting up that's the one I'm hitting on my actual pad and this preset is also available in the contact description you can download it right from my cloud drive and um, import it directly into um, your impact player on in studio one and you'll be able to trigger your new sounds that you're loading up um, so you know from start to finish it was kind of a lengthy process it only took me a few hours to you know get everything mapped and test it out but it works really well uh, for new libraries and current libraries and I currently have in my my studio one um, library there so hope this helps out um, if you like this subscribe to my page and stay tuned for more interviews um, that I'll be posting up all of my shows the producers corner with spot too tight will be broadcasted on YouTube live and on Facebook as well and I also feature a call-in feature uh, if you're on a cell phone and you're watching the show on YouTube live you can give me a call at my studio line directly uh, to speak to myself and the guests that I'm interviewing for the show and the show is broadcasted in stereo um, over WebRTC based browsers um, so all of the studio audio that you hear will be broadcasted directly um, from my studio doll directly in um, to the web I'm using my personal wiring configuration VSC and I got another link on the bottom in the description if you want to find out what more VSC is all about and how I collaborate uh, from studio to studio with different engineers and producers and artists so hit me up spud2dyke.com you guys take it easy peace